Instead, um, I actually did a PowerPoint. I'm old school, so I'm sorry. Left over from my days at work. But do you need to hit it? Or oh, there we go. All right. Um, I'm a damn Yankee. Uh, followed my wife down here to Henry County 30 years ago, where she got a teaching job. So I've been in the building industry since I was 15. Uh, I used to build a house with my family every summer uh, to earn money to go to college. So I went to college, got my architecture degree, never used it. Um, then went back for my elementary teaching degree because both my parents were teachers. And uh, the only good thing that came out of that was my wife. And uh, I spent six months in a middle school subbing and left and never went back. <laughs> So when we came down here, it was kind of a start over. So I've been working for a builder in Atlanta for the last 25 years, just retired just a, here under a year ago, uh, doing mostly cabinet design, uh, started out doing installations. So when I retired, looked for a woodworking thing around Atlanta. You guys were kind of a little far away, but looked good on paper. So we started visiting, and I really enjoyed the group. So here I am, and... Uh, as Rob said, the whole thing that got me here was the 2 by 4 contest that we had uh, during the summer. Um, I've never been in one. I like the idea of it, didn't know the rules really, so uh, I tried to use the entirety of a 2 by 4 by 8 And we will get to that more at the end of the presentation. And I'm going to be looking behind here a little bit, so... Um, is this three two four? <coughs> okay. Oops. You get there? I hit forward. <laughs> <laughs> the other forward. <laughs> There's more than one. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to talk about easels in general a bit. Uh, here's the definition of an easel. Basically, it's an upright surface for working or displaying on a piece of work. Um, not a lot more of it than that. We'll be talking about tabletop easels. There's my daughter's uh, floor stand easel, but I didn't want to spend the time or the wood in doing a floor model. Um, a little bit of history. Uh, display easels have been around since the first century. Uh, Pliny the Elder, back in the Egyptian times, uh, there's mention of him having something displayed on a surface. And uh, the word easel actually comes from the... Um, I have to look at my own information here. Uh, where we got it from? The Dutch, from Ezel, which means donkey. So uh, like the sawhorse in English, English, the horse, the woodworkers, uh, to the artists became donkey or easel. Uh, there's your history lesson. Um, there are three kind of categories of easels. We have the studio easels, and that is a small studio easel. They get very large. They can get, you know, hold up to hundreds of pounds and hold up to a seven foot canvas, and you can't move them. They might have wheels on some of them, but they'll have pulleys and everything else. There is a uh, more of a field easel, which is you see in the French easels all the time, which look like a briefcase or a backpack. We'll have an easel on the top and have folding and articulated legs at the bottom so you can actually go out to the field uh, and set it up and paint where you're at. And then you have the display easel, which we're probably more familiar with as woodworkers going to woodworking shows and whatever um, to show your artwork. Um, two types of easels. That is considered an H-frame easel, which is self-explanatory. It's got parallel sides, cross pieces, and the base is square. And uh, like I said, it's more for a studio piece. Uh, other easels are the A-frame easels or the, um, the pier well, shoot, here I go again. Tripod. Help me out here, people. You're leading this. Uh, the tripod easels. And that's probably what most people are familiar with. Uh, if you've been in conference meetings or whatever, you'll see that a lot. Um, 
they tend to be very stable in the field on, on irregular surface, whereas an H-frame tends to like a flatter surface to work with. Um, uh, not many rules on easels. Uh, that's one of the things I learned about it. About the only rule that I came across was a 20 degree from vertical layback. So if you're building an easel um, to support a display of work, you want it leaning back at 20 degrees mainly so the stuff doesn't fall off it or the stuff is not at such an angle that you can't really get a good impression of it because it will change your perspective on an item. Okay, I'm going to keep running. Just there we go. That's much more helpful to me. Okay. Um, the artist's easel, as you can see, to get a more vertical plane because they like facing their work, will have um, usually something at the top to hold the piece in place. So if you're working on a canvas uh, or you have a board on there with something taped to it. Um, I don't know if anybody watches Bob Ross or had watched Bob Ross during yes, his living day. Yes, he, yes. He's a hoot to watch. Yes. Um, but I've always enjoyed him. So in... In making easels, you need to make a decision. Um, who's going to be using it, what they're going to be using it for, where they'll be using it, and the size of the items that they work on. So if you're building this for a friend or for yourself or whatever, you need to take all those into context because the it is unbelievable what's <laughs> out there as far as easels. Uh, portability, which is more the tabletop easels we'll be talking about, and I'm going to start going fast because I get nervous and I tend to run, so <laughs> slow me down when I have to. Um, portability means to be able to get it someplace without filling up the entire back of your van with your easel. So you want something that can fold down fairly small but doesn't leave a lot of pieces laying around on the floor that you have to figure out how to put together or else you're going to be an IKEA expert at the end of every single assembly that you do. Uh, one of the things I ran across is buying versus making. You can go out and buy an easel, in a lot of cases, cheaper than you can make it just in materials. So you can go, yeah, and no, I'm not going to air my dirty laundry here. You can go out and buy little tiny easels. Um, Hobby Lobby. Um, Walmart, go online to, I may need someone to do this, go online to Amazon, have, you know, thousands of easels to pull from, but you're talking a dollar, buck and a half, two dollars for an easel to support something. You can't buy the hinges for that, even a cheap hinge is going to cost you a buck and a half at, uh, at uh, Lowe's or <coughs> Home Depot. And most everything here was made from stuff from Home Depot. So, um, but I enjoy the challenge of making easels. Um, I enjoy working with the wood. You can make it any size you want. You can make it for any application you want. Um, if you do a lot of woodworking shows, getting some of your work vertical versus it all laying flat on the table uh, is a good thing to have. Um, and one of the fun things you can do, and I did a little bit of it, is you can accent and accessorize it and make it your own piece. Uh, wood, um, dry and stable. Doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, the softer it is, it's a little bit harder to deal with, mainly because you have mo moving parts on most of these easels. Um, you can, uh, most of this is made out of two by four. Um, some of it's made out of oak. Um, some of it's made out of maple, whatever had around the shop. Um, connectors, you know, um, on a, a lot of the easels, j just any metal connector, plastic tends to be a problem with something that's constantly moving, but plastic washers work well. Um, I'm gonna jump ahead here. Finishes, anything goes. Uh, you can dip it, you can spray it, you can brush it. You can dab it, whatever you want to do, but you need a finish that will seal the wood and keep it from warping over time. And also, if it's a working easel, your artist is going to get solvents, paints, everything else in the world on it. So um, you need to seal it up. Uh, most every easel I've seen, um, especially working easels, are just natural wood, probably with a polyurethane finish of some sort or not, or a plastic coat spray on finish. Um, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, One-piece easels for those who like bandsaws. 
Um, <laughs> if you're feeling particularly creative, they are all over the internet. Um, and there's Steel Bob's foam, but these are particularly used for um, uh, putting on your desk. You can set up your phone and play music. You can put a small tablet on it. You can put a picture on it if you want to, uh, to display. And they can be fun and cute for a kid's room. If, like I said, you're feeling fairly creative. So that's just from a 4x4 four <laughs> four from a piece of palette I had. Um, and you can find all kinds of versions. That's one of the simpler ones. If anybody has a question, please jump in and raise a hand. <laughs> um, Two-piece easels. I don't know where I came up with this idea and where it's from. Um, I'll say I invented it or whatever. This is, you can do this with a three by five piece of quarter inch wood or plywood. There's any way you want to put them together. Uh, again, you can put a phone on them or a small tablet or a small picture. Uh, if you're doing the phone thing, make sure that you make the base in a way that your um, cable can charge. Um, mine works best on this since my cable comes out the bottom. So you can, if you want to charge your phone at the same time that you use it. Uh, can you pass one or two of them? Yeah, I was going to say, go ahead and pass those around. Um, and those can be made any size. So if you've got a, you know, 7 by 10 piece of plywood, uh, you can knock yourself out with it. Um, like I said, I, you can personalize it. Uh, if you have a scroll saw, those were done on a scroll saw, but that, this one here, uh, if you want to do it with kids, you can do it with a coping saw. They're simple to make. You can put your team name on it, um, put Georgia Tech on there if you want, if you want to give it as a cheap and easy gift to somebody. Um, everyone's familiar with these. These have been around forever. I think Georgia's brought a few in. It's just a slide together. Um, you can cut them on the band saw. That one I did a little bit as far as embellishment with a scroll saw. Uh, you can do it with a coping saw. Um, just quarter inch plywood and uh, they can come from a couple inches tall to a couple of feet tall if you want to and they work really well with uh, Georgia's kind of work over there uh, that's just a uh, ebony stain I sometimes like dark he's moving up to more of a three piece and here's where it gets kind of you know the the actual easel starts taking over from the piece that you put on it. So uh, that's maple. Um, it's some of it has pegs on it for if you have something uh, odd shaped. I don't have anything in here, but if you have something odd shaped, the pegs work better for round things or uh, a lot of the intarsia work, small intarsia. And personally. Um, when dealing with tabletop easels of any type, and these can go on any surface. So you're talking a tabletop, an entry countertop, a mantle, a shelf. I think pulling the piece off the wall and putting it on a stand makes it a little more art than hanging <coughs> it on the wall like a picture. Getting a little bit larger easels. Um, And, and one of the main things I did with these is make them pretty much all collapsible, so they fit in a box. So this is kind of a variation on an H-frame easel. Uh, just flips down flat. Um, it's a good thing to put a plate on or, again, something round because it's got two points of contact versus the solid point of contact across the bottom. Knock yourself out. Just a larger version. Again, that can be done on a bandsaw easily. There's no internal cuts. This is almost the exact same pattern, but with hinges. And there are multiple ways of hinging. Uh, that one's cut at a 45. The hinges are cut into the back of it. This one's just 90 degrees. I'll let Buzz get caught up here in a second. Um, a screw eye on this? With a, yeah. With a pin, it's very, very... I, I, 
I just thought of that. I couldn't think of a good way. I, I saw several other ways of hinging it, but I didn't have a lot of wood to work with. So again, it's probably not original. I probably saw it somewhere in my lifetime, and I like the idea, and it'll come up again a little bit here. But um, I don't recommend blue. It's kind of an ugly color, but I had a lot of spray paint left over for different things, so it ended up blue. Um, <coughs> You can pass all those around too, but if you want to get a good shot at the back. Do you have um, that many things to display, or you just love making easels? Uh, well, I, I headed down an evil path when Rod got me going here, so um, I thought we'd build up to the easel that I actually made for the or for the competition. And the more I looked into it, I thought, well, you know, this might be fun. So uh, it got out of hand. Uh, that's a traditional A-frame easel. Um, nothing special about it. Um, I tend to go by the seat of my pants. Um, I don't do a lot of calculating and measuring and, you know, it's, it's not steel to me, it's wood, which is warm and friendly. So the angles are my angles. Uh, sometimes I, I tapered the feet to match, sometimes I left the feet square. Um, here's kind of a alternative A-frame easel using just a dowel in the back, and I put a piece of Velcro so I don't lose my pieces here. Um, and one of the things we'll talk about a little bit later is embellishing your easel a bit. And so you can make any sort of um, pegs you want for an easel. And if you like buttons, you can put buttons on the end of your peg. If you like doing um, clay or uh, different epoxies, you can make them and drill a, a small hole in them and uh, make what you want. Um, I've been going to most all the scroll saw meetings and getting back into scroll saw, so we'll see how long that lasts. But um, have some fun with it. You know, if, if you have a child and want to display um, something they made, let's say a fish, No, you can put it back on. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Or if you have a piece of artwork, this easel's a little bit big for that. But you can put a fish on it um, and add your little fish tones to it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. But the main, the main thing is have fun with it. Do uh, I, I had a lot of fun. Um, here's one. I decided to try and make an easel as small as I could. Um, Again, my own design, if I can figure out how I did it. Um, here we go. <laughs> but it basically folds up into a small piece, and the back's locked together. So it's two screws and some pieces of oak, basically scrap. And then I went a little insane um, and decided to try something I saw on Amazon and I don't know it got out of hand um, that one was probably the biggest pain to make of all of them um, small pieces most of the stuff's hidden in back everything's got to move for it to fold up into a, a small unit but it's basically a working artist easel because it's got the top that can clamp down on it um, so you've got you know a small briefcase with the art stuff in it, and you want to go set up at a picnic table somewhere, that might be something you take with you. You mentioned you got carried away with this kind of stuff. Is there any uh, therapy for after you're done? Uh, I don't know. I may drop it all off at the house. Go ahead, please. Question on your elephant. Yes. Did you have one long drill bit, or did you come in from both sides? That one, I actually lowered the drill enough to get it through from one direction. That's a long drill bit. Yes. <laughs> It's a great design. Uh, you'll see them online. I just drew up my own. I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm sure someone will be offended that I use something out there, but um, <laughs> this is, uh, again, another A-frame using a chain to hold the leg in place. Um, very basic. It's got a little more, um, instead of a hinge at the top, it's just dialed and drilled through a hole. Yes, please. The one that buzzes got that sliding piece. How did, how did you hold that 
Uh, you, you can actually loosen it and slide in it out, but uh, it's got one of those fittings that you uh, screw in. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Um, thumb screw? Thumb screw. Oh, okay. no, no, well, it's got the thumb screw in the back, but it's actually, um, you, you can get those inserts that you, yeah, you drill a hole and it's got threads on the outside and you screw it in and then it you can go into like it. It looks like the wood was the same size as it grew, but I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 like I said, that was interesting. Um, and used more tools in the shop than I wanted to because I use the shaper a lot on it and uh, table saw and sanders. and. That vertical slide dovetailed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's why I use the shaper. But you could actually cut the angle pieces on the saw and then glue to make up the, the square piece that everything runs into, which would probably be easier right than there. what I did. Insert. You could also drill yeah. a small hole and put a nut in there and epoxy it in place if you wanted it to. I, I, like I, said, I really like design. It was the last one I made because it was a pain to make. So... Um, another more traditional one, and this is more based off of the H frame. Um, a lot of these you'll see, and they build them in different ways, uh, a lot of different ways, will be fastened on top of a box in which you can store your art materials. So you can go out, slap the box down on a picnic table, raise your easel up, and pull out all your paints and brushes and stuff. Uh, I did not build one of those. So this is kind of more, you know, going to something that you would use in. Uh, the field easel kind of thing. <coughs> and you can add the vertical bar to it so you can put the clip at the top to hold stuff if you want to. There, like I said, if you go out on the internet and start looking, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of versions of these. Um, Talk a little bit about embellishing right here. Um, I didn't do a lot in here, like I said, did some cutouts and did a little bit of playing with some of the pegs. But, I mean, a scroll saw works well. If you're a chip carver, you can add something to it. Um, cutouts, you know, um, knobs. I know you had a class on making knobs yourself, so instead of buying the wood knobs, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, you can make your own knobs with uh, nuts and uh, scroll saws and band saws and whatnot. And another way to embellish it is finishes. You can mix woods, you can mix finishes, you can paint, you can stain, you can clear finish. You can tape off an area, finish the rest of it, and then peel your tape off to, to let the wood shine through. So there's a lot you can do to make it yours. Um, the middle piece on that one with the notches in it, um, that was just a, uh, I took two pieces of three quarter, put them on the drill press and drilled right down through the center of it with a, about a five eighths drill bit and then pulled them apart. And that gave me my notch. Does, did he give you two easels? He gave me two pieces, yeah. So you could do two easels if you wanted to. Um, again, you could use a square piece and hinge the middle. I just decided to try something different since I was in the midst of this nightmare. Those are the smaller easels. Um, let's go up something a little bit larger. Um, I don't know if this will be better here or up there. There, okay. It's a larger A-frame easel. Um, it's a working easel since it's got a clamp on the top, so um, you can slide up and down to, to lock your piece into place. I did a hook in the back instead of screw eyes on both sides so you can adjust this by the length of your chain to get a different angle if you wanted it. If I can find the hook, it turned. I don't get it yet. There we go. So that'll give you whatever angle you want. It's just another way of adjusting it. So it makes it a little more adjustable than locking it. But um, So if you have an artist, they can stand it up a little bit straighter or lean it back depending on how hard the wind's blowing out in the field. I don't know if you want to pass those around. <laughs> They're kind of large. Uh, this is a different, 
I guess you would call it an A-frame because it's a tripod. Um, I just took a one by four and drew a line at an angle through it um, to come up with those. So the angles aren't anything spectacular. These down here, again, the same thing. Um, I just laid them down on the countertop and measured out about a 20 degree angle and that's where I just not, drew a line, notched them on the bandsaw, pegged them and glued them together. So, um, and it goes back to, if you want a more industrial look, those are uh, 10 inch uh, timber, galvanized timber spikes with the ends cut off. Actually, the spikes are kind of neat. I thought about bending them and letting them stick out. Um, the others are, are just pegs or dowels with dowels drilled into them. But um, that was probably the, the second most. Uh, that one sat around forever because I wanted to do something special with the hinges where I wouldn't have to put a chain on it. And finally, I said the heck with it and just put the hinges square on the back and, and chained it to keep, the, keep it open at the right angle. Um, the last one. Yes, there is somewhat of a last one. This is a more traditional H-frame. Well, this is, actually, you could call this an a, you know, a hybrid H-frame, A-frame. Again, you can uh, adjust the angle on it. It's got a dado cut in the back leg here, so this will slide. This actually clips around the outside, so you don't have to cut um, a dado in it. So you don't have to cut dados if you don't want to. You can just make it uh, the top clip different. That uses pegs. Um, if you really need a square bottom, you can just drop a square bottom on it and then clamp your piece of work in there. That's probably the largest easel I made. And um, again, I just looked at pictures. <laughs> As far as the overall dimensions and stuff, that's what I wanted to make it. Um, um, talk to us a minute about how you got this feature in here, this through dado, I'd call it. Uh, that, I have a, a router table, so I just put okay. a straight bit on there, uh, marked my drop and pickup points, and then ran it through about, I don't know, a little under a quarter each time, and then okay. flipped it over, ran it through, and then took it up a little bit and kept running it through. What is the wood that you're using typically? Uh, that's a two by four. Yeah. Fur. Uh, pine? Uh, that's, yeah, this is fur. That's fur. A lot of it's fur. Uh, a lot of what I'm passing around is also oak. So you're going to get oak and fur mostly. Um, so that was just, I didn't have to go through the wood pile very far to, to <laughs> find it. And to be honest, I'm not going to sit there and go through 40 two by fours to find something decent. Um, it was just left over from the two by four contest, so I just kept going and going with it. Um, as you can see from some of this here, it doesn't stay really stable if you leave it loose too long. So, but even then it'll go together fine. How did you uh, attach these two pieces together? There is actually a d vertical dowel that goes up from the bottom piece into the top piece, and then it's just glued and clamped. It's probably not the best joint in the world, but <laughs> uh, modern glues are wonderful things. So there is a little extra support in there, so it's not a straight glue joint. Um, what we're going to talk about today is what got me in trouble here to begin with, and that is this. <coughs> if you want, oh, now you broke it, Bob. You have to pay for it. <laughs> Your yeah, that that is what I did for the two by four contest. Um, the picture frame on it is the leftover two by four, so the actual two by four took about two thirds of it in the picture frame. So that is ninety five percent of a two by four minus sawdust and a few scraps. Um, that one I did use the through dados again on my uh, um, router table. The uh, hinges at the bottom, and I'll pass something around a little bit, were cut out of a uh, piece of toe kick from a door, just tin snips, and uh, cut off a chunk, inch and a half, two inches, whatever you want, and uh, kind of grind the edges a little bit or, or sand them to soften them a bit, um, and then bent them on a tiny little vise I've got, just a screw-on vise for a corner. Um, 
Except the picture frame was an afterthought because I thought we had to use the entire 2x4 for the contest, so <laughs> that's where that came from. Um, the challenge was actually the easel itself. Um, it's got pretty much most of the parts that the floor easel has over there. Um, you can adjust the angle so the artist ugh, so the artist can work more vertical or, or, or you can collapse it totally flat if you want for uh, transportation. Um, it's got you know the top clamp and then um, the entire thing will go up and down also since the tiny clamp doesn't hit this bar. So you're fighting that bar there and you're fighting these right here a little bit on what everything will move. Uh, again, that's just a fur two by four. Um, carriage bolts, a couple of screws, um, nothing complicated. Uh, the big rule I, I came up with was quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. Um, I use quarter inch carriage bolts mainly because the uh, square on the head fits in that quarter inch slot and will run and you can use a wing nut or a knob to tighten it. So I'm gonna kind of go through a walkthrough on that. There's a, kind of the entire materials list and um, you don't need the hinges if you want to use and make your own hinge at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to pass this around which looks like some sort of ancient torture device but it's got a larger version using that eye screw on here so you could use that as a hinge at the bottom. It's got another version of that. Um, it's got a hinge version and a lot of times on the back of an easel where you want to stop it, you use a chain at the bottom or, or a sliding stop like that. You can actually, if you want to stop that back leg, just cut a piece of wood and screw it on at an angle and it'll stop it. And if you want a different angle, you can go to a sharper angle to stop yeah. it. And um, I just made this portable, you can screw that in place, but you want that removable because you can't get to the darn screw heads, so don't glue it down. <laughs> Uh, you could actually make a small one of these with four different angles around it and you could move it if you wanted on a, you know, a larger easel and use that for your leg adjustment on the back. But that's just uh, a couple different <coughs> hinging things you could look at. Uh, as I said earlier, everything I bought pretty much came from uh, Home Depot. Um, the only thing in that picture that didn't is the black knob, which I got like 10 for $5 or something on uh, Amazon, but you can use a wing nut for any of it, which you can get at Home Depot. Um, so here is your kit. <laughs> um, I changed that, and I'll tell you why. I changed that from that, and if you look closely, it'll take you a little while to tell them. Because that was to use a 2 by 4 This one was to make it easier to assemble. So instead of using two-thirds of a 2 by 4 this uses four feet of 2 by 4 And uh, instead of doing um, data or uh, shoot. No, not dovetails. Uh, my mind just went blank. Finger. No, uh, pull up the other one, where the square stuff goes into square stuff. Um, mortise and tenon, that's what I'm looking for. So instead of using mortise and tenon, I went with a dowel rod and just drilling a hole. So that takes a whole lot of work out of it and also eliminates quite a bit of material when you take that off of the list. So literally, um, the other part of that, instead of using a, a shaper or a router table, is I just cut quarter inch slots or quarter inch pieces of wood to glue up the legs. So, uh, which also uses less, less wood than uh, using a one and a half by one and a half piece and cutting slots. Yeah, I need to wax it a little bit more. So, <coughs> not that much. But, um, Basically, a table saw and uh, a sander. Uh, drill press helps a little bit, but it's um, fairly straightforward. Um, like I said, all of these are 
There you go. There's your two by four, chopped up into usable pieces. Question for you. Yes. On the vertical pieces, you have two slots. Yep. I see one in use, so you can change the angle. Yep. Uh, what's the other one? Look up at the top and the back. There's a wing nut on the back. That'll let you slide the T up and down. No, I'm talking about here. Yes. Yep. Look, look at the T. The front slot guides. Oh, the, the front slot guides the T. Thank you. So you have Sorry. to you loosen that back wing nut, and that'll slide up until it hits the, the angle. So it gives you some adjustability for height. <laughs> if you wanted to, you can make that center piece of the sandwich a half inch wide, and it'll probably slide past those fairly easily. Uh, I just ran out of patience cutting pieces and pieces and pieces. So, but. Um, I went from uh, the original, again, with a, a sliding mortise antenna, and I went to uh, a dowel rod in the side. So the quarter-inch dowel rod slides in that slot versus having to cut a tenon uh, to slide in there. Uh, the tenon act, to be honest, works a little bit better. It keeps the piece of wood pushed forward, so it slides by that a little bit easier. Um, you could cheat the dial rod back if you wanted to on this, um, but that's a choice. Uh, we can kind of, I think I'm going to skip glue and all that together, but uh, we can put one together. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's upset. Rob, I actually do have a thing of glue here and some clamps if you really want to knock yourself out on that. Nah, I don't want to interfere. You're doing good. Okay. Um, so the base uh, is whatever's left over after you cut your three quarter inch and quarter inch pieces off of this. Um, uh, I've got a cutting list for two by four, 48, and a two by six by 30. The two by six by 30 actually works a lot better than the two by four. Um, the only thing you might come up short on is the two little pieces that adjust the, the angle. But everything else will come out of a, a two by six. Um, uh, the only machining that this needs um, would be for the bottom and the top. And again, if you want to just keep cutting it out of the same pieces, or you can just glue a piece of quarter inch stuff to a piece of three quarter inch stuff and make that. Um, uh, in, in the end, I like this. Um, just because I could do it on the table saw really quick. Yes, please. You were pretty specific that you used fur for these. How did you tell your spruce pine fur apart? Or not not really. I'm just guessing. Oh. Okay. Um, some, you know, this is more probably spruce or pine at this point here. Um, so, but that's about the only machining. Yes, please. Where did you find the fur from, Brad? I I pulled these out of a two by four by eight rack yeah. at Home Depot. Yep, all this came, yeah, whatever is in there. I'd I, I look for something that's fairly clear, but it doesn't have to be. It can have a few knots in it. Um, I kind of like this one because it had the discoloration on it, and uh, the one easel I think that's going around, you can see has a lot of discoloration on it. I like the bluish, grayish color. That one was an absolutely clear fur 2 by 4 uh, how I found it, like I said, I don't, I don't go through a whole stack. I'll go through about six, eight pieces, and that's it, and pick the best one. Um, I was going to make an oak version of it, just never got around to it, but probably about a one by eight by four foot, you could build one of these out of oak yeah. or maple. Yeah. Um, this is the base assembly. It's really complicated. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, Measured in an inch and a half to the center of the holes, and I cheated the hole towards the bottom a little bit, and drilled a five-eighth inch hole. You can use a three-quarter inch dowel if you want. Um, nothing says uh, I wouldn't want to go a lot less than that. You could probably go a half inch, but uh, glue it, put it on a flat surface, and there's your base. Um, not that hard to do. Once those have been glued together, you end up with your side pieces. Um, came to the conclusion, uh, I was doing these out of uh, 
six inch pieces back when I did this one they're down to three inch now at the bottom of the top I would go back to six inch if you could uh, gives it more stability when your piece slides through here because if you notice those flex a lot when you press in on them um, again these are your vertical pieces uh, well that's gluing them together fastening it together is almost as tough as doing the base uh, these dowels can be any length that you want um, it just happened to be the size of the piece I was working with. I wanted to end up with about 11 inches wide. Don't ask me why. So these are a nine inch dowel that go um, about a half inch in. So you have eight inches dowel, about an inch and a half, or an inch of wood on each side. Again, do it. Make sure that your hole is vertical. <laughs> it can be a little off, but not a lot and then lay it somewhere flat to dry. And those are your two major assemblies uh, that are easy to put together. There is a more complicated one, which is the T. Um, again, it's made up of uh, um, a, a three-quarter inch piece that's been ripped down the middle and you added a couple of quarter inch pieces to the middle of it. Um, you have the bottom of your T, um, which will actually hold the front of your T, which will actually hold your artwork. Um, and there's pictures of this too. Oops. Okay, there we go. So you've got a number of pieces that make up your T. There's your front that holds your artwork. This will connect to that and have your dowels that go in your sliding joints and this will connect to that. So it actually goes together fairly easily. Um, I used whatever screws I had around the shop. And this is just so Rob can say I assembled something here actually. So. Um, da, 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 da. I put the curved part in the front because I like the softer curve and that's just left over from the edge of the 2x4. I didn't clean off the edges or anything. Um, there's your T. So ba basically those are your main components right there. You've got your base your vertical and you've got your T. Um, now that your vertical is assembled, does the T still slide in or? Yep. Oh, okay. it goes in from the top. Yeah, it actually goes in from the bottom. So it'll slide up from the bottom. And that's why if you look at the cut list, um, some of these pieces are the quarter inch pieces go all the way through. And if you look at the quarter inch piece at the top, it only goes halfway through. This actually has enough flexibility. You could probably flex it apart and put it in if you did solid pieces all the way through. Um, it makes it easier to glue together if they're all solid, um, but it is not too bad. And the rest, I'll just go ahead and put this together. I did the hinges because they were the easiest ones. Um, you can round over the fronts of these, round over the tops of these to soften them up. You can cut points, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of this whole thing is um, you can put it together any way you want. If you looked at a lot of the different easels I passed around, some I used butt joints on, uh, some I used uh, Craig screws. Um, There's lots of different ways of doing that. And this one, you can pick your point. Vanna will help me out. Thank you, Vanna. Um, hinges, these are inch and a half. Uh, probably be better with inch and a quarter because they stick out beyond the wood a little bit on the side. 
put that one out a little bit. Um, these have a quarter inch hole in one end and something just big enough for the screw to go to yet still rotate on on the other, so about an eighth inch hole on the other. Depends on what size screw you want to put. Again, if you're like me, you've got all kinds of crap in your shop from years and years of doing whatever work that you did. Again, using the back slot that goes all the way through. Um, I guess both slots go all the way through, never mind. I'd probably use a washer on there, but I forgot to put it on, so I'm not going to deal with it. Before I, I get to this point, you would finish it um, with whatever you're going to finish it before you assemble it. So glue the assemblies together and then finish it. Um, some of these I painted with just a water-based polyurethane. I, I tend to like a lot. Um, some I sprayed with clear Krylon, which you can get in flat or semi-gloss or gloss. Um, make sure to try and get your finish in the slots. Um, <coughs> big old file works really nice for cleaning them out after the fact. Um, as it raises the grain in there. Um, like I said, after it's finished, um, this is your best friend. Um, any old wax candle that you want, clear is better. I'm not going to rub it on here now because this doesn't have a finish on it, but get it in there. You can rub it on the threads of those because otherwise they tend to stick a little bit going up and down. Um, to slide the base in, you've got to get it away from there. So Would it be better to glue, put that on before you assemble those pieces? Put which on? The wax and for the slot. Yes, but finish it first and then put the wax on. This isn't finished, so I don't want to put wax on it at this point. But yes, um, after you start before you start assembling it, get your wax on it. Um, that'll control the height of your vertical T right there. Um, to some extent, you can slide that up and down. The last piece that goes in is your top clamp. Um, again, for artist work, you want to be able to stand this up straight and not have your piece fall off. Artist is going to be hitting it with their brush and who knows what else. Um, <clears throat> on the back, you can drill one hole all the way through to run your bolt, your carriage bolt. These are all quarter inch carriage bolts, different lengths. I also add uh, a piece of a quarter inch dowel rod which once in here will keep this from spinning around in circles. Um, so it keeps it somewhat level. Again, you don't have to do that. It can be loose if you want. It'll spin in any direction you want it to go. Um, you can just use something. There it is. Um, again, I got these, but you can buy these out here. You can get them at Amazon. I did not see any at uh, Home Depot. I'm sure they got them there somewhere. Or you can make your own with uh, quarter inch nuts and uh, go from there. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, put your uh, finish on before you assemble it, wax everything, and then we kind of went through the final assembly. Um, I don't do these presentations. Uh, I appreciate most all of you being awake at this point. Um, I'm open to questions. If not, I'll just run down with odd remarks and whatnot. But uh, as you see, it got out of control. And now I have all kinds of easels. Luckily, my wife does uh, work with a group uh, at school with some uh, students, so we can use some of them. Uh, my daughter's an artist, but she kind of uses a large one. So somewhere I need to get rid of easels. Um, <laughs> So who knows what will happen from there. But uh, 
I look around a lot. I don't see a 12 step program for this. Uh, I wish someone would find it because <laughs> it started, it got out of sight. My shop got so bad, I had to take everything out and we put it in the entry of the house. And that got so bad, you actually couldn't walk in our front door with tripping, out, tripping over easels. So uh, that's what we turned into. So today is the first day I've actually seen the entry of our house where you could walk in the front door and into the house without tripping over something. So is your wife going to let you take these home, or once they're out of the house, they have to stay on the I, I think they're a gift to Rob, uh, most of them. They could stay here for George's. Well, th that's one of the things, especially with the peg systems, they work really well with intarsia, whereas the square bottoms like this, not quite so well. You can clamp them in there, but with a peg, you can sit it wherever you want. So if you've got something, you know, like that, you know, that's no problem. You know, it'll sit there nice. If you've got something, yes, that's my dog, twenty years ago. Um, got something like that, it sucks. Um, doesn't work well. So um, if you are an artist who makes. Uh, ceramics or, or if you're a turner who turns platters or whatever um, an easel might work better if you got someone who collects stones um, we had a small metal easel here um, you can I've seen welded easels before that fold up so basically whatever your calling is well I'll put the easels there you guys have to bring something to put on them that's that's your challenge but I had a lot of fun. Like I said, some of them I think I made up, but who knows after 60 years what my mind's accumulated as far as garbage. But I had a lot of fun doing this. Uh, Rob may be able to talk me into something else down the road. We'll see. But uh, Yeah, Rob can do that. <laughs> I appreciate a, a, a nice audience. Uh, any other last questions? And I'll wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you. All right.